On this episode, I talk about acting human in an automated world. I talk about East Coast versus West Coast. And I talk about being over here while you're over there. You ask questions and I answer them. This is The Ask Gary V Show. You're watching episode 31 of The Ask Gary V Show, as you know, and 31, little fun fact on that number, that is the newest number in my roulette gambling career because Misha, that's right, Misha, my lovely daughter, was born on the 31st, that got added to rotation. Xander born on the 17th, he's my youngest, but my grandma already had that number, so no new number because of Xander. Before we get into the questions this week, I want to obviously talk about the new thing. You might have noticed me mentioning it in the intro. I am now doing an audio podcast, which is up on iTunes. There's also a link right here, and there's an RSS feed in that page on GaryVinnerchuk.com for all you Android users. Uh, and we're gonna be on Stitcher and you know all this other stuff probably Google this Play. week. Google Play this week. Uh, really enjoying it. Little fun fact for all of you that are listening right now. Episode 29 and 30, of last week, I was in San Francisco, the audio quality wasn't great, so we decided to take it out of the rotation of the audio. Uh, You're getting this one, so you'll see a little skip there. Also, episode five had that iconic issue, so you don't see that in the rotation. For all you video peeps, uh, now you have the ability to take me on the go when you're running or in the car if you're not sitting down and watching. Super excited about the podcast. Please sign up. You see what I'm doing, DRock? Sign up, uh, enjoy it, pass it on. Lots of people in the podcast world enjoying that kind of stuff. I'm excited to be a part of it. Maurizio asks, I'm a self-taught social media marketer. Is it worth doing a course on it when I'm applying for jobs? Marcino, you know, it's an interesting question. Uh, I'm self-taught. I didn't take any courses in social media. I think it's done okay for me. Uh, but in general, I'm not a good student either. And I, don't, I never took a real substantial course in business or marketing either. And that's worked out all right for me. I think this is an answer that really matters based on being self-aware. I think if you find yourself as somebody who, you know, in general, being a self-taught social media expert In general, I'm cynical to that. I think 99% of you are clowns uh, and are just reading headlines and are not practitioners and don't go deep. I'm even scared of you taking a course because most of the courses I've seen when I've come and spoke at that class, when I vetted the teacher through the them interviewing me process, I've realized they were clowns. And so in a whole Ringley Brothers and Bonnerberry Circus kind of environment, Uh, it all scares me. I would tell you the thing that most matters to me is to become the most surgical, deepest, knowledgeable practitioner you can be. Uh, But I can't really answer this for you. There's too many variables. One, are are the courses good? Two, are you the type that actually can learn in that environment? I can't. On the flip side, by being a practitioner, that's the best way I learn. And so, That's a whole lot of ego and bravado and I apologize for all my listeners on iTunes that aren't used to this, but I'm just spitting the truth. Social media right now is in a very awkward early stage. If you go back and look at the early internet marketers of 1995, six, seven, eight, nine, they were spewing a lot of crap as well and so it's a difficult timing. I would say this, in five years I'd feel a hell of a lot more comfortable you taking that course. Chase asks, on an average day, how many impressions do your tweets get? Uh, Chase? Oh, I was going to say. I can- Chase, stick there, Steve. Chase, this man has done the work. Give him the credit. Give him the airtime. Steve, <laughs> what, yeah. is the, what is the answer? Uh, so uh, his 28-day average is 240,000 impressions per day, and that's 6.7 million over the last 28 days. There you go. That is the answer. And let's give you a better answer to everybody overall because I'm not sure what that means or if we care. The more important question is, How many of those impressions cared? What I can tell you is in 2011 when I had 100,000 followers on Twitter, I was getting more engagement, more interaction, selling more books, getting more people to watch my videos because of it. And this speaks to the thing that I most care about in the world, the supply and demand of attention. Nothing else matters. Going to platforms early on when there's early tribes there and they're paying more attention, that is to me the upside of jumping into Snapchat early. The upside of jumping into new platforms like Vine early. You look at the first people that over-indexed it on Vine, they are massively internet famous right now on YouTube and Snapchat and Instagram and other places along with Vine. And the ones that are popping now on Vine are not getting to that same level. 
So the impressions, the reach, it matters, but the depth is what matters the most and more importantly, the attention of that consumer on that platform. When something's new, it's a little more sticky. When a new song comes out, you listen to it a bunch of times and then it gets into rotation. Twitter right now is in rotation in a social media world versus where it was four or five years ago and so though my top line followers are more, it's my depth that I worry about and that is a thesis and a strategy that all of you need to figure out across the board. Robert asks, back in the old school days of hip hop, were you East Coast, West Coast, or both? Robert, Biggie changed my life, so I'm East Coast, but I will tell you something, I'm gonna throw you for a real curveball, especially because it's good times in Cleveland right now. I'm a little bit more Cleveland. I was all in, and I mean like, let's put all the pieces in here. I was all in on Bone Thugs and Harmony. Take me to the crossroads every time, East 99 is where you'll find me. Uh, so I'm a little bit more Cleveland. Hey Gary, it's Jason Calacanis. Uh, love the new show and just a question for you. Short or long videos? I like long ones, you do short ones. Who's right in this situation? What's the value of short versus long videos? Explain. Great question at Jason. It's fun to see some of the internet famous peeps showing up on the show. Uh, you know, it's funny, I hear him say, I like long ones, you like short ones. Wine Library TV was 30 minutes every day, uh, so I've been in the long game, unless he's talking an hour, which is fine, but like now we're getting into nitpicking. Uh, I like both, and, and here's what I would say. Avatar, three plus hour movie, people sat, listened to it, loved it. A tremendous Jerome Jar, my partner in Grape Story, six second Vine video, people love it, sit through it. I actually think, Jason and Vayner Nation, uh, that length has no variable on quality. You need to play within your length, but you can watch an hour and 40 minute movie and think it sucks, right? Or you can watch a six second vine and think it sucks to counter my earlier point of those quality outputs within those time lengths. And so, to me, um, which one's better? Both. Uh, you know, because I'm a positive guy, somebody would say neither. Uh, and, uh, and I think it comes down to what are you doing within those constraints and I think it becomes contextual. The skill it takes to make a three hour feature film is very different than the skill it takes to make a six second Vine video or a 15 second Instagram video to capture somebody's attention. And so uh, that's my answer. George asks, what's your take on marketing automation software? George, the key here is, you know, I'm not a huge fan of automation. I've talked about that at nausea. As a matter of fact, once and for all, because it keeps coming up, and I know a lot of people are now new listeners on iTunes. If you ever get a tweet from me or reply to a YouTube comment or reply in the Facebook comments like I did all weekend, it is me. There is no outsourcing of my engagement. I had to make a video to prove it this weekend. I don't know if you guys saw that. Like to prove that it was me tweeting. It is me. The way to humanize automation for people that want to send out things is the follow-up. So if you put something out and you schedule it, not my style, I'm against that because here's what's dangerous about automation, especially in social and email. For all the people, I had a lot of friends and I killed them on this. Let's go back to a very sad day. The, uh, the Boston uh, Marathon uh, massacre, right? Uh, after that happened, Over the next hour or two, the amount of people that tweeted promotional, buy my book, check out my show, sign up for my course, my friends, I was emailing and DMing them and saying, you are ruining your brand. You are, there are 40 people right now that will never respect you again because of what you're doing. And so in a world where everything is real time, scheduling is dangerous for those anomaly moments where you can look really bad and don't let mainstream media pick you up that you're promoting your book after the president's been shot or a building's been exploded or a terrorist act happened because that can be the end of your career completely. To me that is not worth the upside of the automation but if you go the automation route, fine. Here's how you make it human. You act human behind it. You put something out, people are engaging with it, you come in humanly and engage it. This will be always a debate that I'm in a minority, which is I want to scale the unscalable in a world where people are trying to use modern technology to scale. It's as simple as that. I'm countercultural. I'm over here. You're all over here. You're all over here. I'm over here. And I will stay here because I believe in it. And I believe in it not because I'm romantic or zen or 
or such a great guy, I believe in it because I think it sells shit. You've been watching episode 31 of the Ask Gary V Show. Here is the question of the day. Two-parter. One, and this is for the YouTube comments and anywhere else. One, are you going to sign up for the podcast? Yes, no. It's quite simple. Don't let it get complicated. Number two, for all you iTunes people that are listening right now or Skitcher or, or anybody who's listening on the RSS, jump into my YouTube channel and answer this question for me. What can I do to make this a tremendous audio podcast for you? You keep asking questions, I'll keep answering them. Oh crap, wait, subscribe. I need subscriptions because I can't push this many right hooks in social, so subscribe.